right. Welcome to another episode of Melanated Spark. I am your host, Verlaine Quinney, and we have the amazing coach Lauren Jackson today that I get to sit down and talk to. So Lauren, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Should I call you Coach Lauren? Should I call you Lauren? What should I call you? Whatever. Either one's good. I answer the I may switch. Switch it up. <laughs> coach Lauren, Lauren. <laughs> okay. I'm going to answer the both. I'm going to answer the both. <laughs> Um, I am so excited to be here with you, um, Verlene, on your amazing podcast. Um, I am, as you said, Coach Lauren Jackson. Uh, my clients call me Coach Lauren J. Uh, I am a self-published Amazon best-selling author. Um, I am a mom. I'm a mompreneur. I'm a mom of two beautiful, beautiful and handsome yummy boys. They're seven and nine. Um, I, um, man, I've been in the banking business industry for over 10 years. Um, and I, um, recently, I guess you could say recently, not recently, about three years ago, uh, stepped into my purpose, um, Mm -hmm. fully stepped into my purpose. I, um, was married for 10 years and went through a divorce and, um, God introduced me into, to who I was always meant to be. I'm a PK, so it comes naturally for me to know God in all kind of ways, right? You, you would think. Wait, what is a PK? What is a PK? Preacher's kid. Preacher's kid. Okay, I'm okay. Kid. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I'm a preacher's kid, and uh, my dad is a pastor. My mom is also a minister, a licensed minister as well. Okay. And um, and so I grew up in the church, but my relationship with God really, really grew um, when I went through my divorce. And I really got to know God on a lot of different levels. And in in that season, um, I truly understood what Purposeful Pain was since the first Mm. time, my first book, Purposeful Pain, um, because it was Purposeful Pain. And um, and it was one of those things that, you know, you really, when you take note of who you've been versus who God has called you to be, you yeah. learn then how to truly value the process. And so that's just a little bit of my backstory, but I'm just a, a Southern girl from South Louisiana. Yes. Uh, good, good Southern hospitality. I don't meet a stranger. <laughs> I'm one of them people that I'll never meet a stranger. Um, and that I love helping people uh, find their purpose and maximize in it. Because I think that, you know, you can find something or you can have something, but if you're not operating in it, then that means it's not leaving an impact. Yeah. I'm all about leaving impact. So let's, let's kind of, I'm going to build off of what the last thing you said in terms of helping people find their purpose. How do you do that? And we'll start there. How do you, how do you do that with people? Because that's hard. That is very hard. Like if you ask, I think regardless of age, some people just have not found that purpose. So how do you help people kind of discover what that is? Well, it's a natural gifting, to be honest with you. I have a very strong prophetic anointing. um, And that's one of the things that I have come to accept. (laughs) I've always had, but I've come to accept more so uh, in these last uh, going into four years. Um, But really, it's really helping people walk through, especially when I'm coaching, it's walking them through their pain. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at. Most times, the reason that people have not found their purpose is because they don't want to revisit where they had to leave. Mm -hmm. And dealing with your pain is not easy. It's not sexy. It ain't attractive. It's not, it's not what social media, um, you know, is ranting about and, you know, you ain't getting a million likes for that. Right. Um, and so a lot of times that's why people don't find their purpose because see the thing about purpose is purpose is not passion. See, passion can run out. Okay. Let's break that down, (laughs) that down. A a lot of people will align the two or, you know, they'll align them. Yes. Like banking is my passion. It's not my purpose. Mm. Right. So when I think of my purpose, my purpose is tied to the things that hurt me the most going Mm -hmm. through divorce, um, having to, uh, deal with the broken seven year old little girl, right. That had daddy issues. Um, that's different. That's a different type of conversation, right? From a family of divorcees, right. Where everybody's at least been divorced one time. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you start looking at patterns and cycles, that's a different type of conversation. And what I always tell people about purpose is that 
<laughs> if it don't pain you, it won't change you. And purpose is not one of those things that you can just pick up and drop off because it's your design. So it's like even when you're not trying to be it, you're going to still be it. Even when you're not trying to operate in it, you find yourself naturally still operating in it. And it's what people know you for the most. You know, I've been in the banking industry for over 10 years, but people don't know me as a banker. I've, been, I've had a very successful career. They know me as the author, the coach. Why? Because they know me as impact. They heard something that I said, or they've read my books, or they've, you know, worked with me. You know, they've been a client at some point, and that is what people remember me by the most. And that even includes my children. They don't. I was gonna say. Like <laughs> I was gonna say too, because you're you're walking in your purpose, so it's easily for you know, it's easy for that to radiate off of you when people interact with you. You know, before they know you're a banker or author or anything else, they're like they can probably feel it. Um, Cause I know even your energy right now is, is good. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it's, it's definitely that. And so um, I really help people revisit the places that they don't like to go because I understand that that's where the power lies and the enemy doesn't want you to understand where your power lies. You know what I'm saying? He would much rather you be a power outage than a power source. Right. You know, he would much rather that. And so when we try not to be transparent or vulnerable, come on, that's my third book, vulnerable. Mm. Vulnerability is, vulnerable. is uncomfortable. <laughs> vulnerability, the art of letting go. <laughs> um, it's very, you know, people don't like to do that, right? And it's because at that point, you've got to really put your faith behind your actions and mm -hmm. really be able to trust. And a lot of us have had trust issues, you know, um, but really be able to trust the moment that you're in and trust, you know, that you're going to be fine, no matter what the outcome is. And that is the most freeing part about being in purpose is that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, you know, you're confident mm -hmm. that this is what I'm called to do. And no one does this better than me when I do it. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the power of it. So, and I guess kind of building off what you were just saying, being in that place of discomfort is usually where I feel like you change and you really learn the lessons that you need to learn when you get, you know, uncomfortable, but it's hard to be in that place and still sometimes have the faith to trust that things are going to still work out. Um, because I think even as an entrepreneur, that is a lot of times how people decide, okay, I'm going to go for this business. I'm going to go after this because they kind of hit, you know, rock bottom. Like I have nothing to lose. Let me follow my passion or let me follow my purpose now uh -huh. because it's something, you know, I've been thinking about, I've been wanting to do, but not until you're in hard times. I know, at least from my experience as an entrepreneur, that's when I was like, well, there's no better time now to go after my dream, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, you have that you have that faith then to, to be able to move forward in that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that that's so true. And, you know, it's oh, man, it's the pivot. Yeah. It's the power of the pivot. Yeah. And, you know, um, and it's actually finding the fulfillment. See, purpose gives you fulfillment that passion just will never give you. Mm. Passion will make you feel like I did good today. Right. But purpose makes you feel like. Oh, I fulfilled something today. You know, like I, I, I really met my capacity today. And um, that's one of those things that, you know, the enemy doesn't want you to have. And the word of God reminds us that your gifts will make room for you. But what are your gifts? Your purpose. Yeah. And you have to know what that is. You have to know what that is. And so I, I affectionately call myself a midwife. Because that's what I am. I am the person that is there in the tough seasons that help you push mm -hmm. that baby out. And after that baby is here, I'm gone. You know, I'm yeah. not there for the, I ain't helping you lactate. No, I'm not there for that. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about it. I'm a mom too, so I have a five-year-old. And when you said that, it, it reminds me of like when you finally do Mm -hmm. release and push and yeah. all that pressure all that stress everything is also released with it <laughs> that's it it's all released with it and but it takes that person being in your ear saying you can do this it's okay it's okay 
And I've had, you know, two kids. I had both of my boys um, natural births. And one of them, the last one was without any anesthesia. So I know exactly what it feels like. And neither one of my children were small. They're both over seven pounds. No, so, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know exactly what it feels like <laughs> <in> birth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> fear that is around it and, and what comes from it. But how beautiful it is, you know, once you give birth to that thing and um, it lives outside of you longer than it pains you. That's a whole word. Purpose yeah. will live outside of you longer than it pains you. And so if you can just get through the process, um, you'll notice, you'll realize that, wait, God, this was all waiting for me. Yeah. The only reason I said this yesterday, I did a live yesterday. Um, I work out at least four times a week, 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. in the morning. I'm, I'm an early riser. And, and yesterday I shared that success is lonely but it's peaceful. Success is lonely, but it's peaceful. And the reason success is lonely is because everybody's not willing to do what it takes to get to that next level. Extraordinary people do what ordinary people won't do. That's why they're the one percenters. And going to that level requires change in every dynamic. Your mindset has to change. Um, where you go have to change. The people you surround yourself with has to change. Um, the way you speak to yourself has to change. Everything about you has to change. And everybody's not willing to do that, which is why everybody's not willing to reach purpose. We mm-hmm. like to um, romanticize with the idea, but we don't really want the tangible thing of purpose because purpose calls. Yeah people more than what they what they realize but what they don't what what we don't realize is that not being in your purpose is costing you your destiny i was gonna say it's costing you way more not operating (laughs) and not walking in your purpose yeah and so do you feel like when you're in your purpose and the i guess struggles that you're going through or maybe the not even necessarily struggles but the challenges you're going through when, when you're when you're finding and discovering um, your purpose is it? I don't want to say if it, if it's worth it, but in comparison to how long you struggle to find your purpose, in comparison to the amount of time or or how it feels after you discover it, how would you compare those? <laughs> Uh, if you don't want to give up on purpose at least every other day or every 20 minutes, mm. you can't manage it. Because purpose comes and I mean, I, it literally, <laughs> it's a heavy weighter. You know, you got to be at a lift. Really how do you know? How do you know in that moment? How do you know when you've reached your Ooh. full purpose? You know that you've reached your full purpose when you're almost like in this effortless flow. Mm. When it's almost like you're in this effortless flow, it's all, it's something you can't even put into words, and um, and it's the thing that you are most of the time um, most recognized for. Okay. It's your natural gifting, um, and so you know that you're in your purpose when you don't want to let it go. You want to let it go, but you don't want to let it. You know you can't let it go. It's kind of like when people say um, the pain I went through was so bad I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Mm. That's purpose. Mm. Because that means you're going to create a solution so that even your worst enemy don't have to live. That's purpose. So do you think that you have to experience pain to be able to fulfill your purpose? Or do you think there's any other ways to kind of walk into that? Or do you think that's kind of the, the main road that helps you kind of realize it? There ain't no way around it. It's like childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no way around it's childbirth, right? Jesus had to feel pain to fulfill purpose. Yeah. Yeah. There ain't no way around it. Yeah, I mean, he asked, remember? He asked. He went to his dad, hey, you know, you think you can let this cut pass? <laughs> ultimate before Nene Leak said I said what I said no God was the ultimate I said what I said because what did he say nothing as a mom you know when you tell your baby something and you try to repeat yourself you just say nothing because I've already said I'm not gonna repeat what I already said right yeah same way with God so there is no way of getting around it because this is the thing if it was just freely given out to you 
you wouldn't value it. That's true. You wouldn't value it. And there's even in growth, there's growing pains. Mm -hmm. It pains you to grow. (laughs) So, and it has to because it, Pain alters the way you show up, but you got to decide how are you going to alter it? When I was going through my divorce and was public, you know, I was, I was reliving the life that I lived as a young girl. So I was running from thinking I was getting away from it by not dealing with that. And I ran straight into the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so when I decided that I was going to write a book, it was because somebody else said, do you write down the things you say? And I was like, no, they're like, why are you not? Cause I don't. And I never thought about being an author. I never desired to be an author. I never desired to go through a divorce. I was fine in my dysfunctional marriage. Okay. Yeah. I knew exactly what to expect in that dysfunction. And that's most people don't want to say it, but it's the truth. And so I was fine with that. I was fine being unhealed. I didn't really know that I needed that. And one day I was on the phone with my mom and I and I just kept getting this unsolicited advice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unsolicited. That's, my that's usually how it is. The unsolicited advice. <laughs> Don't move on too fast. Well, what you expect me to do? Not sit in that. Just sit here? I'm Mm -mm. always been a doer. I've always been a hard worker. All I understand is getting it out the mud. I don't understand nothing else different. So what do you expect me to do? And so I just kept getting that unsolicited. Like, don't move on too fast. I said, okay, well, guess what? I've never heard anybody say heal. And since clearly I've got the attention, people know me. I have a, a name in the city that I live in, you know, I'm a very a public person. If you're watching, then we're going to give God glory. Because I made yeah. the mess. Yeah. I was a part of the mess. It take two to make a thing go right and wrong. I was a part of that. So if you're going to watch me, let me just let that go to God and let him work that out. That's how mm-hmm. I decided to heal. It was because I seen it. I, I didn't see it. And because I didn't see it, I was like, so, okay, let me leave the manual on how to do this. Let, let me leave the manual. And as I began to walk it and just let people be a part of the ride, God began to expand my territory. But it was because he knew he could trust me. See, God is not going to trust you with more if you are closed off. That's why people are so afraid of vulnerability. Vulnerability yeah. is, a, is an opener. See, your hands have to be open. If your hands aren't open, you can't receive a lot. If your Ooh, hands open, Say that again. Wait a minute. Say that again. <laughs> when your hands are open, that means you're ready to receive a lot. But when they're closed, that means you're not ready at all. And if anything, you are in a position where you don't look approachable. You know, you already look like you're on the defense. Nobody coming to hear what's on your heart and you got your fist up. Because they can't fight. Nothing about you says I want to hug. (laughs) So, you know. Not with your hands closed. (laughs) And so, um, in order to get what's truly yours, you got to be open to more. But that means you got to get vulnerable. And if, once you get vulnerable, you realize the power was never in what you tried to hide. It was in what you weren't afraid of showing. Yeah, that vulnerability. And I wanted us to change that. And so all of my books are my journeys. It's my personal journeys. It's not me talking about some fantasized thing that I hope happens one day. No, it's talking about I lived it. That's why I don't have to be prepared for interviews or anything else. Because... I live this every day. This is my natural gifting. If you meet me at Walmart, this is exactly how I am. I'm always on assignment because I understand it's bigger than me. That's how you know you've met purpose when you're willing to when you're willing to serve something that's bigger than you, mm. and don't profit you first. Yeah, and that's a that that's a, a place of selflessness. But if we're gonna be Christ-like, you gotta be selfless. You got to have that. You've got to have that servant's heart. And if you're only wanting to serve you and your agenda, then you just, then basically now you just competing with God. <laughs> yeah, and that won't last long. <laughs> I'm not trying to I'm not even go trying against to God. God. <laughs> his stamina or his level of pettiness. <laughs> okay, I said what I said. He got time. So, you know, that's um, that's when you know that you're in it. Is when you're willing to serve something that don't profit you first mm-hmm. and that um your fulfillment comes from seeing other people get it you know it don't profit me for somebody to, to birth out they they purpose uh, or you know it, not literally it profits the nation it's all about what we serve in when we can heal in the world yeah when one we person can, at a time really 
And, and that's what we were sent here for. See, when God sent us down to earth, he, he sent you as a solution. That's why you had to go through the pain. The pain is the problem. <laughs> so, and you're the solution to it. So if you went through it, it's because he knew you had, he knew that what he put in you was the solution. Now the question is, are you open to be the solution? That's, that's hard. That's hard for a lot of people. It is because I think we, we talk about this, um, amongst, you know, some of my girlfriends is when you know what you're called to do, but you're scared because you, you know, you're going to receive it. Like, you know, you're winning, you know, you're going to receive it, but you hold yourself back from actually receiving it. Mm. Like you're, you're holding yourself back. You're not, no one else is holding you back. No one else is going to block the blessing. You feel it in you, your soul, your discernment, everything is telling you, yes, this is for me, but you still don't act on it. Mm. Why? I don't know. (laughs) That fear, that vulnerability. (laughs) I think, you know, a lot of that all kind of plays into that, especially some of the things that you've been sharing with us today. Um, I think vulnerability is a big part of it and being scared to be in front of other people to share that story, being vulnerable to share that story in fear of judgment, maybe of others, um, several other things too. So my next question is with your book, being so vulnerable, how did you move past that fear of, of sharing? And like you said, um, spreading that the the information and your experiences with other people how did you move past that that fear and publishing it and getting it out there so other people could experience it as well I feel like uh Betty Wright (laughs) why do you feel like Betty Wright Betty Wright said uh when she did that second album after the pain she said in there she said um y'all the only difference between me and y'all is that y'all know me but I don't know you, but mm-hmm. it doesn't change that we didn't been through the same thing. That's true. That's true. So that was it. It was like, I mean, yeah, I'm going through this, but you didn't been through this. You know, it was like, you've gone through this. You just not talking about it. I'm just crazy enough to talk about it. And, do and sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people, when they're going through things, they feel like they're the only person going through it. When that's not necessarily the case. Other people have been going through it as well, you know? So realizing it's not unique to you. Um, it may be unique in terms of what, how you're experiencing it, but the bigger picture is other people have gone through the same thing as well. And they're going through it. So that's the other part. And they're going through it. They're doing the same thing you're doing, pretending that you're not. Mm, mm-hmm. But the, the whole thing, that whole, that, that whole thing is married to self-sabotage. That's what the fear is, self-sabotage. Um, and having the trust issue. See, if the enemy can get you to mentally put yourself in a cage, mentally, where you don't think you're good enough, you don't think you deserve it, you don't think you can attract it, you've never seen it done before. Uh, why, you know, if he can make you question you, then he don't really have to do much else. I was going to say he don't have to do anything else. That's it. <laughs> That's it. They were done, right? He, you think about it. When he was in the garden, now God and gave you all these trees to eat off of. You gonna be on the one tree, right? The one tree that God told them not to go to. Then you didn't even talk to Adam. You just talked to Eve, right? So what is that telling you? That's why you gotta watch who's around you. Because yeah. what is around you <laughs> can influence what's in you and how you choose. He didn't talk to Adam and tell Adam he needed to eat that. He talked to Eve and he made sure, yeah, Adam was present, but he had Eve's ear. Mm. He already understood, but most of us don't. If I get the ear of what is closest to your heart, I can get you. Mm. He ain't got to tell you that you're not pretty and you ain't never going to. I mean, he ain't got to know that. He could just get to send a man a distraction that's not God sent that tells you that. He ain't got to do yeah. nothing. Now you're going to sit on your gift. 
Now you know what I'm saying? I can't do it. Oh, I can't be this because I'm a single mom. Who gonna want me? I got two kids. What man gonna want to be with me? And he'll leave you, make you stay right in that dysfunctional relationship and let yeah. you keep your own self. But see, this is what people don't realize. What I love about the Bible and my studies of it is that even when Judas sold Jesus out, first of all, Jesus already knew he was going to sell him out. He mm. already he gangster. Hey, next person to get their bread, that's this person going to sell me out. <laughs> I would have dipped my bread, okay? I'm be acting like I'm not even eating bread, okay? <laughs> this man right. dipped his bread like it was nothing. <laughs> Know it, right? right. You playing, you just playing what I call crackhead games. Playing what? Wait a minute, what is that? <laughs> so, the crackhead games is when you trying to play people like they first, oh. right? Like, I'm sitting in your face knowing I'm playing with you. Mm -hmm. we, matter of fact, you know I'm playing with you, right? And but we just both sitting here pretending like we don't know. So, you let him do that, he sells you out. But he don't realize the betrayal was the setup for where I was headed. I was betrayed on purpose. I'm sorry. Good. Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> it's my <laughs> daughter. I, I, I don't trust me. I, I get it. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. He, he betrayed Jesus. But this is the thing. Jesus knew he was going to betray him. Yeah. And even in all of that, he didn't even get to enjoy the reason he betrayed Jesus but in the first place. The little, that little silver that he got, he didn't even enjoy it. Because if you continue to read, he killed himself. Yeah. Even yeah. if Jesus was mad and he wished he could have killed him himself because he was in flesh, he didn't even have to. He didn't, even have, he didn't have to commit the sin. He didn't yeah. have to be the murderer when this person was going to do suicide. Mm. So it's like, that's, that's the thing we got to get to this point right here. Stop worrying about who betrayed you. Yeah, because they are, they're not gonna get to enjoy what they what they even sold you out for. See, I was betrayed on purpose. You don't even get to you don't even get to enjoy it because what you thought that you wanted ain't even fulfilling. Yeah. So who who the problem? So when I came to that realization that girl, you was. How else were people going to get to know you like this? How else were you going to be able to come this type of... How else were you going to be able to walk in this anointing? How else had you not had you not been <laughs> like your daddy? Had you not been like Jesus, right? Had you not been betrayed? Had you not gone through pain? How were you ever going to profit purpose? Yeah. You had to go through it. So it, it was... What Fantasia song said, it was necessary. Yeah. <laughs> it was necessary. Because now when I speak to things, I can speak to them because I went through them. I can coach people and help people financially in, in their life, in their marriages. In a, I'm a quadruple threat. Yeah. So you should have you should have left me where you found me. You didn't. Have, first of all, he never betrayed Jesus. We who knows what the story would have turned into for me and you. Exactly. Exactly. He not been betrayed. So you know when we have that fear in our mind of well, what people gonna think. Uh, baby, half of them waiting on you to become because you're not real, you're not even a real friend because you have not become who God's called you to be. So, while you going to happy hour and hanging out with these people who are sad, gloomy, and wishing they had whatever, and you the one pregnant with the with the solution, you're not their friend. Yeah. When I tell people all the time, your friends uh should always challenge you, call you out. And push you forward. The people that right. see that you're doing dysfunctional stuff and they're okay with it, those are your enemies. Those yeah. are your enemies. Your enemies are not the people you don't like. Your enemies are the people that clap for your dysfunctional behavior and they don't challenge you to change it. They want to sit in that with you. Because you know why? People that are still struggling with their sin will always desire to keep you in yours. Oh. They don't Ooh. want you out. They want company. Yeah. Right? Because misery loves company. Company. <laughs> it's really miserable. Sinning is miserable. Even in the moments that it feel good, it really don't. It's like having the, a hangover. During the time that you're drinking, it's fine. Afterwards, it's something else. <laughs> it is not fun. Okay? It's not fun. <laughs> so it's like, you got to pay attention to that. But the enemy yeah. don't want to get 
you to that point. He don't want you to get to that point where you're at a place of peace, of prosperity, of full, true fulfillment. Happiness, everything, yeah. Why else, why, why else would you have ever wanted to reach out to me if I had not been in purpose? Why else would we have this podcast if you had not been in purpose? It was necessary. Right. And, you know, um, I love to empower people to break up with your fear. Every single day I wake up and I, and I decide, what am I going to break up with to break through to? Ooh. What am I going to break up with to be- break through to? I like that. Every day, that's my question. What you breaking up with today? Some days it's procrastination. Some days is, you know, um, sluggishness. Some days is poor time management. Every day it ain't the same. And some days it still is. But every day I'm breaking up with something in order to break through to the next level. Because when you are operating in your purpose, you understand it's like sales. There ain't no plateau. Mm. It's like I've been in sales all these years. Sales is there's no plateau. You're only as good as the moment you're in. Always. Like, I mean, you if you were really good last year, okay, girl, that was last year. <laughs> right. That's much a number sucked. Okay. Like today every day (laughs) yeah it's everyday thing but purpose is like that too we have we our problem is that we've gotten to we want to get conditioned that retirement is going to happen retirement is dead okay i was going to say retirement now is very different than what retirement looked like several years ago correct and to me um retirement is death you know i always tell people death is a privilege it's a privilege. The, the the cemetery is a privilege. You know why? They're not wearing mm-hmm. masks. They're not worried about COVID. They're not worried about their taxes. They're not worried about shootings at the school, shootings at the red light. Mm-hmm. They sleep. They resting. They're not worried about their child that they didn't really raise properly or that they didn't heal. <laughs> you know, right. they're not worried about they never told you who your parent was. Mm-mm. Oh, that's over when you hit the cemetery. They the ones chilling. Like, we should all be jealous of them. Because they're the ones winning. <laughs> We're not really winning. I, 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 I. They the ones winning. Because they have no worry. And so, you know, for me, I always tell people, I'm going to work till I'm gone. I'm going to rest. Mm-hmm. When people say I rest when I'm dead, that's yeah, that's how it should be. Because as long as you're here, I don't care if you're 89 years old, you got purpose. You better try to get your, your business straight. Because when we get to the pearly gates... I'm really praying that God has a line for fast pass, like like this. <laughs> I'm gonna need the fast pass, now, okay? Because I'm gonna do every single thing you ask to me, and I'm not trying to stand behind the people with the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Because mm. it's gonna be a long line of them. They be the regrets, the, all of that. I woulda did, but God, God, no, she wouldn't have. <laughs> she listened to this podcast, <laughs> and she still ain't did her job. So. Can I just go ahead? I heard them excuses on earth. They probably didn't change. Okay. Yeah. Can I just go and go in? Because they're going to be a while. I'm not living. Trying I'm, to figure out a reason <laughs> to explain to get in. God, can I just get a trailer? No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have a with God. God, can I just get one by one gate? No. You should have thought about that when you was playing. So right. I just want to get <laughs> Fast line. I'm going to let God know I did everything I was supposed to do. I listened to you. I was faithful. I, look, I gave up some stuff. You know, I lost some things. I let my ego go. My pride go. I operated my purpose. I left impact. And my impact was not just the money I left God. It was literally the lives that I transformed. Can your girl get a mansion? Yes. That's it. That's my life. I tell people I'm living to live again. That's why I don't fear death. Death is a privilege. That's a great perspective, a great mindset, um, because then that also pours into every day you're, 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 you're obligated to walk in your purpose so that you are making an impact. Obligated. And every day that you do not operate in who God has called you to be, you just delayed somebody. Because mm. he fashioned us to be in relations. That does, yeah. He fashioned us to be better together yeah every single day that you decide you're not gonna post you're not gonna put that book out 
You're not gonna open that business. You're not gonna write that blog. You're not gonna open that room on Clubhouse. You're not gonna post your post on LinkedIn. Guess what you just did? Delayed, delayed. <laughs> so if your friends all delayed, it's probably your fault. Cause you probably the one sitting there, you know, with the, you the one pregnant. And this is yeah. the thing about pregnancy. The people around you don't always know you pregnant first. When you was three weeks pregnant, nobody knew that. But mm -hmm. your body did. You yeah. may not have known you was three weeks pregnant. Oh, but your body knew it was. Your right? body was uh, preparing for those changes <laughs> that were about to take place. Okay. So a lot of times people are walking around pregnant, don't know it. Yeah. And so that means the people around you don't know it. And then there's sometimes you get around the old folk, they know they call yeah. it out quick, baby. You know you pregnant. I ain't pregnant. <laughs> they always know. <laughs> they always know. So, and why do they always know? Because the people that are outside of you see you before you see yourself. Mm. Because see, they see what you won't accept. Oh yeah, yeah. They see what you won't accept. You self sabotaging because see, this is the thing. You know what you've done in the public and in private. And so, in your mind, you're thinking. I can't do that because God, I did this. God, they gonna they, what, do they have to find out that this happened? Do they have to find out about? And God's like, in denial. Can you just come on? Mm -hmm. Can you just come on? I graced you for this, and I hope that whoever is listening to this podcast, God graced you for this. Like, let that sit with you. Yes. Give you that pain for you to sit on, and for you to to create a, a sad cry me a river tune to oh he gave you that pain so you could go and impact it so if you're talking about that you're looking for your purpose go look at your pain first and i'm talking about the one that you don't you hope don't nobody find out about i'm talking about that one that you don't really want to accept that you got a smart mouth and you don't really know how to talk to people well and you're still mad about some things and you really need to talk to your mama about some bad decisions that she made, but you don't feel comfortable, so you just mistreat everybody else around you, that pain. That's where your purpose at. Mm. That place. That's where your purpose is. The place that you felt the most abandoned, it feels the most abandoned too, because you won't come back and pick it up. Mm. So if you really want to find your purpose, go find your pain. What hurts you the most? Nothing hurt me more than having to let go of my 10 year marriage. Nothing hurt me more than having to let go of my half a million dollar house. Did nothing hurt me more than having to let go of my Lexus. Did nothing hurt me more than having to tell my two children that I planned to bring in this world. That I had to divorce their daddy. Nothing hurt me more than having to do it all and do it all alone. Nothing hurt me more than having to move to an apartment my income had changed. I had switched jobs in my industry and I was making the least amount of money I had made since I was 22, I'm 34. Mm. Nothing mm. hurt me more than to spend three years helping people buy a home and I didn't own one. Come on. So when people try to give me excuses about they, I can't, oh, you can't bring me that. Cause I produced a Amazon best-selling book when I was going through a divorce that I paid for. And the family helped me pay for that. I was mm -hmm. having to sell things, lose things. Okay. Uh, I still had to lead while bleeding. I still had to live my life. I was like, I couldn't even cry about the things that I was going through because it was purpose. I still had to help people, speak into people's lives, not sleep at night, have no money, and still tithe in a season that I couldn't, I really didn't understand what God was doing for three years. So when people try to act as if they can't, what well, is a will is really a way. Because if I did it, then ain't no reason you can't do it. There's nothing that separates me from you. The only difference is, I was crazy enough to go after it. I put my faith behind it. I put my all of my belief behind it. I cut off certain people behind it. Did I care? No. Because when you get when you, when it gets bad, you remember this in that in that delivery room. When it get bad, 
You don't care how big that needle is. You're going to sit real still and let them poke you. Okay? You ain't about, oh, I can't do it. All the people, I don't deal with needles. Oh, you going to deal with a needle today? Oh, uh, I got a 79-year-old. They'll pop up on a live in a minute. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, yes. Real life. People don't want perfection. They want authenticity. Yeah. And yeah, then, that's true too. And guess what? There's nothing wrong. If I'm, if you're a mompreneur, then you already know how kids act. Like, don't get on here playing. But, but guess what? I dealt with a spill. Had to get up and do with that. Put my fire going. We did. And, but I'm still here. I'm still back, back up. <laughs> I'm still back. It's still gonna happen, right? Because that's how life is. That's how purpose is. Yeah. If it's not, if you're not having disruptions, and if there is not opposition, that means you have no power. And the enemy is not concerned about what it is you're dealing with. I expect, I've, I've gotten to that season, I expect opposition. Because I know I'm powerful. I know yeah. when I come to the room, I'm going to shift the atmosphere. So I expect that you're going to have a problem when I show up. Some pushback. Yeah. I'm going to be a problem for you, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a problem for you. But, you know, that's why, I, for me, a purpose was bigger. I had to serve in a season where it wasn't comfortable for me. I had to lose things. I had to learn God in a very intimate way. And I had to do all of this stuff mm -hmm. all while going through my own pain, dealing with my own stuff, having to continue to push forward. God was training me for something. And now we were yeah. three years in. I've spent time with God. Um, I'm very intentional. Um, and I spent time with God this past December like 31st, like 2020, going into 2021, I spent um, a week with him in the mountains. I went to Phoenix, Arizona, um, okay. and hiked. I never hiked before. I hiked, loved it. I, I'm going to be going back here in two weeks. And um, as I spent that time with him, he told me, he said, I'm going to restore you to the position that I had for you, not the one you settled for. Yes. I'm going to restore you to what I had for you, not what you settled for. Mm. Three. Three is also the number of resurrection, biblically speaking. And you understand the timing of God, though, like what numbers mean to him, then it's not, you're, you're not caught off guard, okay? Uh, you're like, oh, yeah. what time you said? You right. <laughs> you, you right. When you go look it up, you're like, I should have asked. <laughs> so we go, I go out there by myself, and um, he gives me a lot of moments of like, basically like checking me moments and um literally when he said he was gonna restore me he did just that Lit literally restored me and um my children this year wanted two things um because i am a coach a life and, and business coach my children set goals and i'm very um intentional about them setting goals for our family and so they wanted two things they wanted to go to the beach and they wanted a new house because we were still living in an apartment i was still renting and so i said okay and in march um for spring break i surprised them and took them to, mm. to south padre island texas which they've been to the beach several times so i was like i don't know why the beach is on here but whatever I love <laughs> beach, so i'm not gonna argue about it and uh i wrote them their first love notes oh Packed the car up, me and my best friend, I call her my sister. We've been friends for a very long time. And uh, we surprised the kids and took them to, to Dallas and flew out and flew out to, to the beach. And um, in their cards, I wrote to them, affirming the, the little men that mm. um, they are for my sons a lot. Um, I'm very big about that. And um, we spent four days there, four days on the beach, doing everything they wanted to do, right? Spent all kind of money doing this stuff. And then I turned back around. And in April, I put a contract in on a house and I began building a house. Oh, wow. And for five months, no one knew I was building a house. Wow. My mother and the father did not know. A couple of my girlfriends knew. My children had no idea. And you surprised them. And I surprised them last Monday. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Thank you. And How are you liking your new home now? <laughs> I love it. It Yay. is my place of peace. And we manifested it because the neighborhood that we're in was the neighborhood that God told me to drive in um, last July when I was nowhere near prepared. Credit-wise, mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared. Income-wise, I wasn't. 
financial. I wasn't prepared. But he said, go, he said, go and look, go and let me show you a place that you're going to have. And yes. when I drove into the gates, I felt as I was at home. I knew I was home. I didn't fall in love with the house. I fell in love with the experience. A subdivision mm-hmm. is an experience. Yeah. I fell in love with the experience. And, um, Clearly, I couldn't be afraid of building a house. This is the second time I built a house. The first time I've ever built one by myself, but I get paid to help people buy houses every day. I mean, right. I'm not afraid of the process because I do the process for a living, right? So right. And I've been doing it for three years. So clearly, I shouldn't be the person afraid. And I wasn't. Um, okay. And literally, God completely restored me. Literally. 700 credit score. Yes. Okay. Come on, sis. Um, yes. Nice, big, beautiful house. Yes. I truly believe in, in affirming yeah. your life, manifesting the life you want, you know, going after that vision. Like, that is so important. I think it's it's a little underrated, but it's, it's so important. <laughs> energy. Yes. It's the energy, and your energy is tied to what you believe. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and so I built my house, every single thing that I wanted. I had a corner lot house when I was married. I got a corner lot house now. I am so happy for you. Thank you. It overlooks uh, the water. There's a pond um, that our entire neighborhood is actually circumferenced around. It keeps, they keep it stacked with fish and there's this beautiful waterfall. And so from my front porch, you hear the water. If the if it's windy, you'll feel the water. The oh, wow. Up. And it is one of the most angelic and peaceful places on earth. And it feels like I'm home again, little girl. And, I'm mm. and I didn't think I could afford to live there. Cause I was like, God, the house is in here like $400,000. God, I'm not spending that kind of money again by myself. Yeah. He said, but I got you. And guess what? Made away. Your girl Made is away. in there single. Okay. That's <laughs> deep. That deed says Lauren Grimes Jackson. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Wasn't nobody on that, okay? Um, and I brought my own money for down payment. Mm-hmm. Nobody gave me nothing. I worked for every single thing I had, but I am the most fulfilled. And um, mm-hmm. then I came back, and one of the things that most people won't know, but I guess this will be their first time ever hearing it. <laughs> I also that same week yeah that same week um I had to downsize from my Lexus to a Camry and then I have a new Lexus truck so I surprised oh me. yeah congratulations to that too <laughs> my kids was like we got a new house and a new truck in the same week hi <laughs> <laughs> you know when you favored, some things are supposed to happen for you, okay? Hey. And I favored. And so there's just certain things that are supposed to happen for me because of who I am in God, who I'm, what I mean to the kingdom. It's just certain yes. things for me. That's not an arrogance, it's a confidence. And I don't apologize for it. Um, and you shouldn't either. Nobody should, you know? Yeah. And so I shared this testimony for the person that's listening who thought they had to lose. Baby, you better go turn on that Fantasia. Have you ever needed someone so bad? <laughs> but they wasn't willing to make it last. Sometimes you got to lose to win again. And I tell you this much, it was worth every single moment of pain. Just like every single moment of pain that I felt birthing my children into this world. The pain that I that I had to grow through mm. has nothing on the purpose that I've enjoyed. And yeah. to have done this on my own. No, and to be sitting in that fulfillment, that happiness. Girl, don't nothing make me happier than when um, my stuff is delivered because I've been getting delivered things delivered to the house, like my washer dryer, my refrigerator. Yeah. And then when they come in my house, they're like, there's always a question of, are you married? To right. No. <laughs> you need to worry. I don't need to pay my bills. Uh, I got this. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, he, God is my source. I don't really need, like, you good. Just put it over there. <laughs> um, you know, it, it feels good. It feels good. It yeah. does. And it feels good because it reminds the people that have watched my journey that you really can win on purpose. You really can. It's okay. And I'm not done. I'm just getting started. I'm like, I haven't even, st- I ain't even reached 
what I'm going to reach. I haven't even impacted yeah. like I'm going to impact. Like, it ain't even happened yet. But it's happening every day, piece by piece. And the process I'm enjoying. And so for the listeners and those of you that are listening, especially I'm sure you have a, a great female audience that listens. Yes. Look, sis, you are not that pain. You are not that problem. Whatever you did wrong, God forgave you. Forgive yourself. Dust yourself off. Okay? The only people that's, that are reminding you about your sin are the people that ain't left theirs. And that's okay. And that's, you don't need to be around those people. No right? way. <laughs> like, no way. Time? I don't have time. Okay? I have a, a, a hourly planner. A hourly yeah. daily planner. Meaning every single hour of my day is planned. Is accounted for. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what time is that? Oh, I ain't got time for that. It's blocked. Book my time, okay? Book my time. And I'm not booking time to listen to who I'm no longer, who I had to die to leave. Mm. I didn't even bury her. I cremated her. So there is no, I, you don't need to, you can't go and find a body. And it, this is not coming back. It's not a last <laughs> moment. This ain't no, can the dry bones live? No, because they ashes. They, they, they can't live, okay? I cremated her. So there's mm-hmm. nothing that you can do. And this woman that I became, it was because I got obedient. It's not because I'm better. It's not because I should have. People expect favorite people to do right. People expect, like, they, they see the favor on your life. So they're like, oh, Lauren did that? Oh, I can expect that. Mm. The enemy don't want you to expect that about yourself. So if you are listening to this testimony, when God says, I will, I will restore you to the design that I had for you and not the one you settled for, he wasn't just talking to me. He was talking to you. But he knew these lips would tell. Because I don't care. I'm going to tell you because I want you to win. I, I don't care about your feelings. I care about your destiny. Okay? Like, that's the difference. And people that care about your destiny, they don't mind telling you, I was hell on wheels. It was tough to be with. Uh, I had to heal. I had to apologize. Come mm. on, somebody. I had to forgive somebody that I didn't even like. Come on, somebody. Ooh, that's hard. Because <laughs> guess what? I understood that when you have a snapshot, a vision, a dream, an idea of where God is about to sit, take you, baby, you'll forgive everything. And yeah, I you won't jeopardize it. Everything. Yo, Judas, you gonna be out there blessed. Hey, Judas, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. <laughs> just looking blessed. You will be blessed, everybody. You hear me? Because man, when you know that what he has, when he says that his thoughts are to prosper you, he mean it. When he says that he knows the thoughts that he has of you, he means it. Mm-hmm. And when when he really fulfills you, you are not looking for something else he james ones and fours you let patience have her perfect work that ye may be entire wanting nothing meaning that when he mm-hmm. send you a gift he sends it to you fully assembled batteries included you ain't gotta look for no manual how to put somebody together you need to look for the tag of how to take care of it the end yes that's, and that's the life i'm in and when i tell you it feels good yes I lay in that bed <laughs> and I'll be like, God, you did this. You know, I just, I to my gate. I just be just excited, like, this is my house. This is mine. This is I love it. God. And um, you know, I shared it. I, I I didn't know that I would share that portion because I share so much of my life, but as much as I share, I'm just as private. And um, it's a balance. And so I was like, I don't know if I want to share that. And then God was like, nah, you're going to share it. Somebody needed to hear it. Somebody needed to hear it. And so um, I'm not ashamed of where I've been. I just know that where I've been has called me to impact. Yes. I'm I'm coming back. Hell on wheels. Because I'm about to pull out every single thing. So what's next next for you? Girls. Like, where do you see yourself in the next few years? (laughs) So, um, next thing for me is I do have a um, marriage retreat center and okay. a bath salt and soap line. Actually, that's awesome. this Black Friday, so be on the lookout okay. for it. It's called Intimacy. 
Ooh, okay. It's the second book title. It's called Intimacy and Twist of Faith. But um, yeah, so that'll be coming out. Um, mm-hmm. And that's a partnership that I'm doing with one of my really great friends. I have an intimate circle. Uh, we were James 1 and 4 for two years. And then this past year, we transitioned to uh, Jeremiah 1 and 5. And this is literally five women. Um, and I'm the staple, meaning I'm the person that knew all four that brought everybody together. But um, we have a w- amazing friendship. All of us have gone through being married, divorced, dealing with the pains and add co-parenting pains, you know, losing jobs, losing things, regaining back, death, loss, you name it, we've been through it. But um, we put our faith together and they are the people that when no one knows what's going on in my life, they know it. Because You need that. You need that support. Everyone needs that. That's my praying group. Um, It's amazing to be amongst women that you have no problems with. Mm, Um, There's absolutely zero drama and nobody is ever judgmental. Um, So that's my group, Jeremiah 1 and 5. And... um, and so anyhow, um, I do know that we're going to do some things together um, to help empower women to connect with other women. Um, okay. And uh, and so, yeah, so that's next is the Marriage Retreat Center is next. And awesome. while I'm not married yet, the Lord said I got to get married again. I told him we could have just been together, just me and him, because it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fight it, though. Don't no, fight I it. I was like, God, it's kind of peaceful, just me and you. You, like, I'm promoted, you know, when my divorce came, like y'all gonna be hating on me when I tell y'all about this promotion that I got for my divorce. Cause I call it a promotion. You yeah. know, my kids go to their dad every other week. God, I guess 14 days. I'm an offshore mom, seven yeah. days, off, days off girl, and I am in the heavens. Okay. That's nice. Um, <laughs> jobs, I can do all of them from anywhere in the country. I just need Wi-Fi. I got high spot. If I want to go work from Cancun today. You can do it. They what they did. Yes. Look at God. And I That's and nice. Yes. Okay. That's nice. That is a promotion. <laughs> I already know all the mompreneurs are hating. Pray to God. Okay? I'm hating a little bit. A little bit. I, 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 I can't even vent like how like some of my friends are like, geez, I'd be like, I oh, you right. You know, like this morning, I woke up at like 7 30, <laughs> laid in the bed till 8. You know, it wasn't nobody calling my name and bothering me. You know, I got home last night. I went and ate uh, with my girlfriend, Angie. And, you know, we stayed out about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Girl, ain't nobody called me. I ain't had nobody to get ready for bed. Put your glasses up. Put it's your just you. <laughs> Look, I'm like, mm-mm, God, nah, I like singleness. It's a blessing for me. So yeah, I do know that God is going to use my life uh, and use me in that area. And I do know that I am in preparation uh, for my better whole because I'm not married, nobody broken. Um, I'm perfect. I just need you purposed. So I need you to go on through some things because we got some lives to impact. And, you know, we're going to have to live life a little differently than most people. So be prepared for that. So I've been getting prepared for that, right? And so I do know that that'll be some of the next things that are happening. And one of the most recent things that's happening is I have a trailblazer boot camp going on right now. Oh, awesome. Session, one-on-one private coaching session with me. And um, we work diligent and really help you break up to break through. And Mm -hmm. um, and so it's for clients that are, um, you know, ready to fully step into their purpose and and profit from it. Your purpose should profit you. That's why your gifts will make room for you because God did not say he wanted us broken struggling. That is not no. in the word of God. Um, but, but in order for you to be in alignment for wealth, you got to be doing the things that you were designed to do. So with that being said, <laughs> eight weeks trailblazer boot camp. <laughs> Uh, because I am of the belief that you only need to blaze a trail once and it only takes one person. It don't take everybody else. The reason that it's hard on you because you the one person, you the one goal, right? And once you blaze the trail, the rest can all follow. A trail is never blazed twice. It's only I love it. And so um, I know that that, that boot camp is not for everybody because I'm not for everybody. Uh, and, and the purpose ain't for everybody either. You know, bridge your purpose, as you see in my background, is my brand and it is uh, my life motto is to help people be able to cross over troubled waters easily. That's what a bridge does. And um, and so I help people do that. 
and with their business and set everything up and we coach through it. And so it's a beautiful time. The first four weeks of us spent building you interpersonal skills and um, business development. And then the last four is us putting together your automations and. Oh, that's pay, awesome. Letting it pay you. So all this wisdom and knowledge that I've gotten from doing every single thing in the banking industry. I have an MBA as well. Um, so I've got two master's degrees and, um, you know, I've done so much. There's so much that I know. There's very little that I don't know. And what I don't know, I attract within the next day or two. I think God says, no, he'd be like, let me send this to her. And so I'm always meeting somebody that knows somebody all the time. Because <laughs> I'm open. I'm vulnerable and I'm open for more. So, and I don't close off. Um, and so anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. And I've had quite a bit of sign up. So um Yay. super excited and it is private i don't do group sessions um not for stuff like that uh just because you know break you know people gotta break up in private sometimes you know and that's okay that's okay and mm -hmm. that's, i love it i love it coaching is that thing that i can do any time of the day i've done it any time of the day and any time of the hour because it's my design i can wake up out my sleeping coach it's nothing to me because i'm this is what i was born to do so it works and so those are some of the things I'm, I'm working on and um, I do a lot of corporate coaching stuff I have a um, becoming an author um, one of the local universities here actually contracted me um, to teach a two-day course on how to become oh. an author. so that's something that um, you guys may be interested in if you follow me on LinkedIn uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, you can click the link in my bio. The dates are actually this month. It's going to be October 16th and 23rd. Those okay. are both Saturday mornings from 10 to 12. It is virtual, 10 okay. to 12 virtual standard time. And they're only charging 50 bucks for a total of four hours with me. That's so, good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's very what's, good. what's your social media handles? Yeah, so share that. Yeah, absolutely. Instagram is Bridge Your Purpose Today. So you see the sign, Bridge Your Purpose, just add today to it. That means not tomorrow. Bridge Your Purpose <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> today, okay. Uh, Bridge Your Purpose Today on Instagram. My Instagram uh, personal page is just Coach Lauren J10. Um, 10 being the number of obedience and law. See, everything I do has strategy. Uh, build yeah. Coach Lauren J10. And then on Facebook, my name's just Lauren Jackson. Um, and my Facebook business page is the Purpose app. Um, and I'm on Twitter, Coach Lauren J10. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, just Lauren Jackson. So okay. there's more. Than, and I'm on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is really where I spend all my time, to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> Clubhouse is where you will find your girl. Like, I love being on Clubhouse. Um, and I'm just Lauren Jackson on Clubhouse. Um, okay. So that's where I love to spend my time. There and Instagram is where I spend a lot of my time um, as well. But if you ever want to know what I'm working on, it's always posted. I'm an open person. My DMs are open okay. um, to help you or point you in the right direction. But those are the things here recently that I'm dealing with and I'm working on. So October 16th, if you need to become an author, go ahead, join, go and get registered. Come on, because I'm going to be teaching that. It's, it'll be me giving you all the tools and tips and resources on how to do it. And then the second session, which is on the 23rd of October, I'll be teaching how to make your how to make it profit you and base and talk about strategies, marketing, you know, monetizing, how to build on it, you know, and all those kind of things, things that most people don't tell you um, yeah. and how to become a, a best selling author. You know, that's a strategy. Uh, that's just not. Um, it's something that happens yeah <laughs> strategy and so um i'll be sharing that information um and it's a great this is gonna be a great time as you can tell my personality this is natural so clearly i'm not changing so i know it's gonna be a wealth of information yeah. you are filled with it <laughs> Filled with it. So, um, so I'm excited about that. Definitely excited about that in the Trailblazer Boot Camp and um, just seeing my clients go to the next level. So I'm yes. excited. And I'm so excited I got to spend this time with you. It has been Yes, so thank you so much. So much fun. So I look forward to all the different followers. And if you want to yes. see the unveiling of my house, follow me on Instagram. It's there. And Facebook. I'm excited for you. <laughs> I'm excited. All all these accomplishments and everything that you you've envisioned for yourself and for your life, for you and your family. 
everything is manifesting and coming to life. So I'm, I'm really happy for you. Um, thank you so much for taking this time to talk to me and share all of this information, encouragement, steps needed to move forward with our listeners as well. Um, it's, it's, it's truly been a blessing, all the information you've been sharing with us tonight. Well, thank you. Oh, far I forget, I also have a YouTube channel. And it's oh yeah, yeah. Share the YouTube. What's Coach your YouTube? Lauren J. Yeah, Coach Lauren J. Okay, and I'll make sure that everything will be tagged so everyone yes. can get directly to it as well. Yes, and I'll make sure if you don't have my link for you, that I make sure we give it to you. you may yes, have it, but if not, I'll give it to you. But yes, I'm excited. I can't wait to uh, just continue to connect with great like-minded queens. Yes great things i love to support i believe in um i believe this we all shine individually but we glow collectively i agree i I could not agree more i believe in that so i'm never gonna be the person to like girl if you shine and i'm like over there yelling like you not trying to dim the light no (laughs) please don't dim your light around me because i'm gonna address it like hey like why your light down What's going on over there? there? <laughs> you need different bulb. What? Why? Is that? Right. <laughs> we not doing that, okay? We we need be, be bright, baby. If they don't like it, they can get some sunglasses. If it's too, if the they don't like the the temperature, they can put on a jacket or take one off. Yeah, we're not changing. So um, I'm just excited to definitely be connecting. So I'm excited. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to your listeners who've been a part of this mompreneur journey. Yes. Uh, Enjoying this moment with us. So yes, thank you so much. So any other questions for me? Anything that I left out? No, that was Uh, it. I was going (laughs) through them, like trying to review back. Um, That was, yeah, that was all of them. I think hearing your journey from where you started, where you were coming from, your experience that you're in now, and then hearing about everything that has manifested today is is amazing. So getting a complete understanding of your journey has been very powerful. Well, thank you. You're so welcome. (laughs) I will definitely stay connected with you because I want to definitely make sure we're, we're staying connected and we're getting this information with everything that you have going on. Um, I'm excited. Trailblazers, they're going to be out here getting it. <laughs> getting it. Okay. Getting it. <laughs> that is the goal. Is, is us, uh, man, making the trail, you know, um, like Harriet Tubman. It only took one. Yeah. It only took one, you know. She could have let her, her, uh, Pass an out spell, make her, oh, let me not travel all this for, but she didn't. She yeah. said it. And then God spoke to her in that moment of vulnerability, you know, in that moment of vulnerability, you passed out, but God's giving you direction. And when you wake up, guess what? The, the people that's looking for you still can't find you. That's a word for somebody. The people that's looking yeah. for you still can't find you because you're hidden in him. And when you are on, on assignment with God, he has the hedge of protection around you that Come what may, can't nobody touch you. Mm. The enemy can't touch you. Even when he thinks he's touching you, he just positioned you for greatness. He's just positioning you for greatness. And it only took one woman. Come on, somebody. It only took one woman to blaze a trail, to do something that was greater than herself. And she didn't do it just for herself. The first time she did it for her confidence, but the rest of the time she did it for everybody. Like, oh, I got this. Okay. <laughs> At this point, my girl was like, look, either you coming or you not, but I'm not about to keep begging you to come. Mm-mm. I'm not going to keep begging you to come. And she's the one we're still talking about. Nobody talks about how much money she had. Nobody talks about how much money Martin Luther King had. We're talking about the impact that they left. Isn't that what you want your life to look like? I don't yeah. want nobody talking about how, how much my life insurance policy was or if I had some Louboutin bags or red bottom shoes. Baby. Nobody even cares. <laughs> Once you're gone, nobody cares. Your legacy. Okay, that's not just a song. That's the truth. Your legacy. Your legacy should not be built around money. It should be built around impact. And that your money used. <laughs> money is a resource and a tool yeah. and an energy. And you attract it. But you can only attract what you believe. And what you're open to receiving, like you said earlier. Is your hands open or closed? We just trying to find. We just trying to see. <laughs> we just trying to see. Are you open for more or not? 
but I'm open for more. And I'm definitely open to God blowing my mind. I'm open to letting people watch. I'm still writing. Um, I'm writing my fourth book right now. Oh, yes. Yes, it's been a journey. It's been a journey, but it's been a beautiful one. All of my books are a journey. Every last one of them is a journey. So um, I didn't expect this to be anything else. So I'm excited about it. And um, it'll be done when I stop living it. That's all I said. My mom's my editor. And she says, when are you going to be done with this book? (laughs) When I stop living it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's God. I don't know. Uh as soon as I stop living, I'm sure he'll let me move on to something else and we can publish this. But um it's just been a great journey and I'm grateful and I'm thankful for every twist, every turn, every plot, every setup, every single moment. It was never personal. Yes. yes. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all the promotions that came with my benefits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well thank you so much it was great speaking with you yes 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 thank you